I'm coming to you from the garage studio today to uh, do a little demo. It's been a while since I've done a demo and I feel like I, um, I've been experimenting with some fun products from Golden lately since I went to that training in New Orleans at the Hotel Mazarin with Golden Paints. And um, I wanted to show you something that I learned in that class that I've been playing around with in backgrounds lately and that's an encaustic hack. So basically it's using acrylic products to sort of mimic the look of encaustic and I'm using these as backgrounds and then I'm doing a painting and I collage on top. So I'm going to use a golden soft gel mat and I'm going to use golden uh, fluid paint, uh, fluid acrylic interference gold and I've got a credit card, room key or a gift card and a wide brush. So I scooped out already all of the, uh, the soft gel mat onto the plate and then I'm going to add a certain amount of gold interference into it. And this sort of is going to give it a sort of that yellow tinge that encaustic has. But how much gold interference you use, the more you're going to get a more of a yellowy tinge and the less a less. So, and it is metallic, so it's going to give sort of a shiny look as well. So you're going to have to experiment with how much uh, to put in based on how yellowy gold you want it to be. So that's sort of a personal preference. Um, I tried it the first time with nickel ozo gold and it was entirely too yellow for me. So that was another suggestion that Golden made was that you could use a little tiny, tiny bit of nickel ozo gold. Um, fluid acrylic, but even the little bit got really yellow for me. So I preferred uh, the interference gold, but this again is metallic. So, um, but the either one was suggested by Golden Paints. So what I'm gonna be doing this on is I've got a 12 by 12 panel that I have covered with ephemera. I've glued it all down um, and I've let it dry. I've got a few bubbles in it. Even That even happens to me. Um, I try to get it all down flat, but every now and then I get some bubbles. And I'm sort of hoping that the, uh, the encaustic effect will sort of hide that a little bit. And then I'm, of course, going to be painting something on top. I'm probably, I'm going to do a tropical fish on this because this is going to be part of my Key West show. So, you know, I can get strategic and sort of angle my artwork so that it covers uh, the bubbles, which are primarily like right here and right there. So you can always sort of, you know, work your way around the bubbles. So, because the rest of it's down pretty flat. The reason why I got bubbles here is this is a very large piece. And I always tell my students of collage, make sure your t torn papers are very small because if you go very big, you're gonna get a bubble. And this really demonstrates that because this is the largest piece on here. The small pieces, um, the smaller pieces around the periphery, none of them are bubbled because they're smaller. So the solution to this would be to tear it into four and then glue it back down together and then you'd be less likely to have bubbles because it would be four small pieces and when you glued it back down you'd never see the seam so um just you know for your information and this is also on a two inch deep board so i'm going to go um i have my ephemera wrapping around the sides um and, the, and it can hang without a frame so so i've got my plate full of the um of the uh soft uh the soft gel mat and I'm going to add in the gold. That's probably a good amount. I'm going to stir that, blend that together. This is a nice, thick texture. Um, it's a little thicker than you'll probably get it out of the container because it's, uh, I left the lid off for a little while, admittedly, and it's dried and gotten a little thick. Uh, when that happens, you can add water or uh, fluid medium, but I figured this would be good for um, spreading with the credit card anyway. I may have gotten overzealous and made too much, but you are going to lay a thick layer um, because you want it to be you know, giving that wax effect. So if you give, if you just do a thin layer, you're not going to get that, that real translucent kind of waxy effect. So we're going to lay it on pretty thick. All right. I think, believe it or not, I'm going to add a little more to that. If I was a more particular artist, I would measure it, you know, I would measure the two parts so that when I got it to a blend that I was really happy with, I'd have the measurement, but um, I'm just not that organized, honestly. Okay, so I'm going to then take the board and my wide brush and I'm just gonna spread it on 
pretty thick. Now this is gonna take a while to dry, a couple of days actually. The thicker you put it on, the longer it's gonna take to dry. And then of course, depending on your climate, because here in Florida, everything takes forever to dry because it's so humid. But if you live in Arizona, you might have much more immediate results. So I'm laying this on really thick, cleaning off the edges. I do have a lot left over, so that means I'm gonna have to put a piece of saran wrap on it and get crack -a on another ephemera board so that I don't have to throw this out. So I've got it spread pretty evenly. This is gonna take forever to dry. And then the goal uh, is to try to take this gift card and um, see if we can get it even smoother on the surface. That's sort of hard to do. And since I don't do encaustic and I've never done it, I don't even know how they get the wax smooth on the surface. But this was just my intuitive thought it was just running the card across it. And it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. Um, I, I feel like it's still nice to have the hand of the artist in something that's handmade, you know. Um, it's okay to see brush marks, it's okay to see some wrinkles, and it's okay if it's not perfectly smooth because it's handmade. All right, so I'm putting a little extra on with the card. I'm scooping up some with the card to sort of put it on areas that look like they're a little thin. And I'm gonna scrape it off from around the edges where it's overflowing. I'm not gonna do the edges with this, I'm just gonna leave the edges with the ephemera and then I'll varnish them when the piece is done. Okay, that's pretty good. I've got a little uh, playing card here that's raised up a bit because it's thick and it's kind of protruding. So I'm going to add a little bit more on that and scrape it a little more gently. Try to anyway. And then at the end here, I'm going to add a little bit more and go the opposite direction. It's sort of like frosting a cake. And I can bake an amazing cake, but they never look good. I always said I was going to take that Wilton cake decorating class, but I never did. I figured if it tastes good... That's more important. Maybe. Okay, so smoothing it out the best that I can. You may be more particular and want it to be a little bit smoother. Um, and then going around the edges and scraping off the extra so you don't have it hanging over the edges. Just like that, removing all the extra. And then I'm going to sit it here to dry. I have a fan in my studio that will blow room temperature air across it. You don't ever want to dry it with a heat gun or a hot hair dryer, room temperature air recirculating. So I'm gonna do that and um, I'm gonna do a little Julia Childs on you. Here is a underpainting on the um, this same effect. So if you can see that closely, you can see the wax effect with the encaustic effect. The gold is just slightly yellow and you can see the ephemera underneath it the little playing card, but you can see that it goes sort of through a, a waxy kind of an acoustic feeling. And that's all the same type of ephemera that I used on the one that I just showed you. And I've got one more. This one I actually think I laid the wax on a little thicker because it's even, I mean the, um, the medium, because it has an even more waxy look, um, really subtle. And then the bubbles on here, I went over with some white gesso and I put a little white gesso around the edge of this is my underpainting and I will collage this eventually. But I'll leave that encaustic hack background just as you see it there with the little playing cards and the, and the, uh, and the handwriting. And we've got a little wrinkles, um, but I think the surface overall is nice. And that's the effect that you're gonna get with this technique that I learned at the Golden artist educator training in New Orleans and I wanted to share it with you. Thanks.